Good day, Strategy Gamers, and welcome back to episode 55 of our Let's Play series, Stalingrad to Berlin. Uh, we are now in turn 29, which is the beginning of June 1943, and we continue to have a very successful campaign. Uh, the more and more I think about this, the more convinced I am that we probably will finish ahead of the historical schedule. Um, there are some areas like Kursk and Kharkov that we're actually kind of behind on taking, but others where we are ahead and I think are... We, we have had such a strong focus here on pushing to cut off Army Group North by moving over to Riga um, that I'm, I'm more and more convinced that when we accomplish that, it will have a disastrous impact for the Axis player as these units will become stranded. They may be able to retreat some through naval options, etc., but at the end of the day, it's just going to be quite devastating, I feel. And I think that will allow us to, before 1943 ends, right, probably this fall, this winter, to have really isolated the entire army group, allowing us to do much more of a sprint in 44 down to Konigsberg and into Germany proper. Um, but where we left off was we had... We did the first half of ground movement phase turns in the previous episode, and so you can see we're very successful here. Um, this is just just north of Minsk, and we worked our way all the way over to Kursk. Um, so we're going to pick up right where we left off here. We'll finish up the rest of the ground movements for the turn. We'll see what end of turn kind of administrative things we may want to look at doing. Um, and then we're going to close out and see how the Axis player responds to our movements. Now there are a few pockets here where really we don't have enough to be able to break through to, to make it to Kursk. And, and I'm really okay with that because Kursk has never been one of our strategic focuses. Um, for In my opinion, it just has a little bit less relevance for trying to get a victory earlier than the normal win conditions would state. So... I haven't pushed too hard on Kursk. We only have a couple of pockets of units here that are really kind of on the stronger side, and where we have them, the Germans have brought in some infantry divisions that are, are pretty well situated. So I think what we'll likely do is where we have some strong units here, I'm going to try to reposition them um, a little bit to the west, which I think will allow us to put more pressure on Kursk. And I think the... German AI player right now is kind of looking at the situation and going, you know, I bet you the Soviets are trying to get this rail line that runs north-south, and it would be very nice to capture this, right, again, to help with all of our logistics as we look at how do we continue supplying our um, armies in the south near Stalino, but I think it might be more important to try to cut off the crossroads of Kursk. So we're going to take a look at some of these units, like the 55th Guards, and I'm actually just going to bring them all the way over here on the front. And I think we'll also bring over the 7th Guards Cavalry Corps. And we'll leave this token 305th Rifle Division uh, to sit where they're at. Um, although maybe I think I might actually going to bring them back to the HQ, but I want it to see where our depots are and where is everyone being supplied from. So it looks like they're being supplied from up here. So I'm going to move... Oh, okay. Hold on. So the 60th Army has units here in the north and in the south. So at minimum, I'm just going to move this two over to get a little bit better coverage there. Then I'm going to take this infant, this rifle division take off that overlay. I'm going to set the 305th to be in refit status. And this guy, yeah, these two I'm actually going to take off refit. And I'm going to take the 292nd and have them hold the line there. The 112th guards, I'm actually going to move over to this side of the map, because I would like them to help with pushing here in the next turn or two. This fourth guards tank corps, let's actually see what their TOE's like. So 
medium tanks are only at 50%, recon at 50%. So, frankly, I'm going to move them back for some R&R &R as well. So I'm going to take them back. That's where the depot is. I'm going to set them on refit status. I think that's kind of the most appropriate move there. And then... I don't think I have to worry about them trying to break through here, so we're just going to leave that as is. Okay, that's good. Down here, again, we're just going to kind of hold the line because we don't have enough to break through, um, but we get such incredible defensive advantages by sitting in these fortification levels of three. We're going to stay right where we're at. So I'm betting this rifle division would probably be decent to be on refit too, but because they're in not only light woods, but also fortification level 3, we get a 9 for a defensive value, which means if they just attack with this infantry division, they don't have 2 to 1. Um, and they'd really kind of be opening themselves up for counterattack after that. So I think that's going good. We're here, yeah, and that's the Voronezh front. So... Debating if I move this stack down. Because we have these two stacks here that aren't on the front line right now. Their fatigue has recovered quite a bit, which is good news. Yeah, I think I'm going to move them down. So we're going to take the strongest units, the 42nd Rifle Corps. They're all twos. We'll also take the 1st Guard Tank Corps. And then, yeah, all of these guys are kind of hurting. Are they all... Yeah, they got 40th and 60th army. I think I might have this guy go back to the HQ. I'm going to set him on refit as well. These two will stay where they're at. Yeah, this is working. Over here, we're going to take the 36 Rifle Corps and move them up. So now we have enough to push through here. So let's go ahead and do that. It's 27 to 4. Should be plenty. Route at them. Even better news, they took 4,000 losses. It was a Romanian division, but still, it's really good news. And then... I think we might take this entire stack and just move them forward. All right. So then this gives us 43 to their 21. Or I can have these guys push south. And I think I'm going to have them push south. And I think I'm going to try to break through this Slovenian mobile division. 36 to 11. Let's do that. There was a mountain division committed to the defense, but we should still be able to break through. We did. We lost 31 armor, though. That seems pretty high. Let me make sure... Ground support is off. Okay, good. I'm gonna take this stack here... ...and move them up. These guys can come over here. We're going to have them push through. Okay, so they route it. And going to have them now advance. Here, we're going to have them push through. Good stuff. Got a lot of advanced movements to do here. Move these guys down here. And... We're going to attack this stack. 15 to 3. They retreat it. This stack will move up here. Ooh, they had to go around the river. That's not that good. Let's bring these guys up. Bring up the artillery. Take both those stacks, and we're going to attack with 36 to 5. Overwhelming odds. They retreat it. Plus 9 armor, though. Just feels high. Now here they have the 3rd Panzer Division, right? Which is going to be pretty capable of a counterattack. So I don't know how much more aggressively I want to push here. 
I think we're gonna take this mechanized unit up and try to get intel on. Okay, yes, yeah, so we can. We can manage to move up there. I think what we'll do is we'll push through right in the center. Right in their center, we'll push. They retreat it. So that's good. Down here, I'm going to push through. Another light division was committed, but we'll crush them still. They lost 30 armor. It was a Romanian armor division. Let's take a look at that one real quick. I'm curious what they were using. Did I misread it? I thought it said that they had lost 40 armor. Did I maybe click the wrong battle? 30 armor. There it is. I found it now. Okay, yeah. So the, these aren't Panzer threes or anything like this. These are Romanian units. Um, we lost a KV-1, which is a little surprising, considering them. But all good still. I think this Rifle Brigade I'm going to move up here. And... really like to find a way to push north here. I'm wondering if I take the 9th Rifle Corps down here. Do we have enough to push? 18 to 7. Let's do it. Alright, good. They retreat it. I want to put pressure on the 3rd Panzer, right? I, I don't want the 3rd Panzer to sit here thinking that they're that their flanks are well defended. Right, I want them to think that they should probably withdraw. Um, so that's why we're moving up like that. Need to move up some of these HQ units as well as we continue our advance. This artillery unit we'll bring back here. Okay. Do I need to move? I don't think it hurts to move you up a little closer. Yeah, because you see, some of you now are out of range, so we need to get you up here. There we go. So yeah, I'd like to take a look at moving some of these stacks forward, but for now I'm just going to hold, given the third panzer is ready to counterattack right there. Seems like the prudent thing to do. Although, hold up, so can I maybe take... Yes, yeah, so I'm going to move the tank core up and then back. So now I have this rail hex. Yeah. Okay. This HQ unit we need to move up. Now here we're going to start to get into the Stellino front, and I'm going to do what I usually do, and I'm going to look at Stellino first, then make my way north. Right? Because the focus needs to be pressure on Stellino. And if I have a bunch of movements where I'm attacking in a more northwest direction, I may find myself with insufficient number of units that can apply their force to the southwest of Stellino. Um, towards Stellino, I should say. So we're going to look and see how can we best break through at Stellino. Here they have defensive value of 7, 6, 5. So really this northern perimeter, I think, is where I'm going to have my most success and trying to put pressure on Stellino. They have up here the Grossdeutschland Panzer Grenadier Division, which is the most significant threat for counterattack. And then up here they also have the Wiccan SS Panzer Grenadier Division, the 9th Panzer, and the Totenkopf SS Panzer Grenadier Division. So there's a pretty strong concentration of units here where I really want to stay on the defensive in this pocket right here, right? Um, I need to make sure that I keep a strong enough northerly, northerly, northern facing <laughs> front, if you will, to prevent them from sweeping down on top of me as I push on Stellino. Um, I do think I'm going to take some of these guys here. I'm going to do the 77th and the 320th, and I'm going to have them attack this 5th Jaeger division. Alright, that just keeps them on their toes. 
Then over here, right, we want to make sure we're pushing through north. And I don't know that I want to attack with this stack given their defensive vulnerabilities here, right? So when we look at it, let's see. The 15th Guards Rifle Division is contributing the most to the defense. Least is the, really it's the NKVD Rifle Division and the 38th Rifle Division. So which of those two do I want to withdraw? I think I want to withdraw. I'm going to withdraw the 38th Rifle Division because their combat preps only at 40 and their fatigue is higher at 25. So I'm going to take them up north here so they can help here. But because they're not within one hex of an enemy, they're going to recover their fatigue and they're going to build their combat prep more quickly because of that. And then here, let's see. Let's take, yeah, I think the 8th Rifle Corps is the obvious choice. Let's take them down south. So now we have 18, 20, 99. We're looking much better in case they did try to counterattack with the Gross Deutsche Land Panzer Grenadier Division. I don't think we're going to see many counterattacks at this point in the campaign. Um, because right now, the, the general feeling, when you look at the map, is we have stretched them very wide where we are using our numerical superiority. So anywhere where they may use their forces in concentration to counterattack simply weakens them on an already stretched front line. I mean, just visually look at this, how few gray markers there are here in between Minsk and Riga. That has got to be really alarming, OKH, as we look at I mean, just driving straight through to Germany, right? Um, that, that's very advantageous for us. So while they have the capability to counterattack here, I don't know that they're going to see it as the most prudent option. Rather, it may make more sense to save the strength of these units for when the front line, because over time, the front line will naturally decrease in width as we move towards Germany. So as it gets skinnier, like if you just imagine, right, a front line that stretches from Odessa to Konigsberg, that's a lot less, like, half, that's half the size of territory they have to have a frontline defensive, where they can then be more impactful with these SS Panzer Grenadier divisions. Now that that lecture's all over, um, let's now look at actually moving forward and, and attacking here into Stellino. So very first thing is I'm going to take these two stacks of units, and I'm going to attack this Romanian Infantry Division. Oh my goodness, they have Romanian Infantry Divisions right on the front line. So they route it. Fantastic news for us. Um, that's one less infantry element that they're going to have at their disposal um, to try to counterattack us. I think I'm now going to take... wondering if I take this 110th Cavalry Division. How are they doing on... Yeah, they're pretty good on TOE. I'm going to change them from reserve to ready. I'm going to move them up here. Ooh, that was only defensive value 2. It's not that great. Let's also take the 27th Rifle Division. That's only 4. And then let's take the 20th Rifle 4. So that gets us up to 13. There we go. They're at 6 over here. So let's take this stack and attack, which is 20 to 7. And they both route it. Again, fantastic news, because that's two more elements that they're not going to be able to get back to the front line in the next turn. Now I'm going to take these units that can make it. I guess not many of them can. 293rd rifle can. And... That Rifle Brigade can, I guess. So, defensive value now of about 9. And then I'm going to take this stack here and attack, which is 34 to 7. First Romanian Mountain is committed. There's an artillery committed. We routed both units. So we have routed a total of 7 Romanian divisions north of Stellino in this one turn. 
It's fantastic news. I'm not going to advance into that hex, though. Um, I'm going to hold right where I'm at. Again, because of the whole thought of counterattack here. I would rather use my strength to stretch south to get behind Stellino and begin the encirclement. So now that we've done the north of Stellino, I'm now going to work my way up and see, okay, what do we want to do in this pocket here? And the, the really short answer is going to be almost nothing. Um, do I push back this unit? This one unit seems to be a bit of a pin in their defense. But I don't know that I... Yeah, so a lot of these guys have already stretched themselves this turn, so I'd have to do it just from this hex, move these in. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. So what I'm going to do instead... So I'm just going to move this entire stack up. I'm going to have them attack here. Oh, we don't have enough. Very well. Really, can the Rifle Corps not do it either? Oh, it can't. Okay. So that, that's going to put a lot of pressure on them now. They'll have to look at relocating their HQ unit. We're probably getting near one of their depots here. And my hope is that by breaking through in this hex, it forces the 3rd Panzer, the Totenkopf SS Panzer Grenadier, and the Wiccan SS Panzer Grenadier divisions to retreat or, or reassess where they need to be. Because right now, just looking at it on a map, there certainly is a considerable threat of us advancing on both flanks of these units for a possible encirclement in a couple of turns. It, it's not our intent, and it's not what we're going to do, but it's a risk that they have to consider. Um, boy, I'm looking at this. I'm almost tempted to try to make a push against the third pan, the ninth panzer. Excuse me, not the third, the ninth panzer. But their fortification levels three. I just don't think it makes sense to to take a fight in that hex. So we're we're gonna skip right past that. But what I think I might do. So I don't know that I need the Rifle Corps and the 4th Guards Mechanized Corps in that hex. What I'm wondering is, can I get the 4th Guards Mechanized South to help with Stellino? They're part of the 57th Army, which is down here anyways. Yeah, so I'm going to bring them down here. There we go. All right, so that all contributes with our push to try to get in and behind the enemy. It's tempting to... I just don't want to raise that fatigue level any higher, so I'm not going to push any further. Do I have other units that could maybe make it there to them? I don't believe I do. Yeah, we're not going to have anything that can make it there. 169th rifle, nope. Back here, that rifle division, no. Do I maybe move into this hex? I'm wondering if I move into this hex not to try to hold it, but do I just add a bunch of bodies to that hex? Yeah, yeah. So that rifle division, I'm going to move up. 27th guards rifle is going to move up. And then do I take this 248th Rifle Division? Maybe. I think I will. So they have a defensive value of 10. If, if they choose to attack with the Grossdeutschland Panzer Grenadier Division, the Grossdeutschland Panzer Grenadier Division would win. However, I don't have some great sentimental or strategic attachment to these three units, and it acts as a bit of a buffer between them counterattacking our northern flank of Stellino. So that's why we move them there. And then it gives this stack of units a turn to lower these fatigue values, right? Because you see they're all in the high 50s now, and combat prep is also down. So by not moving this stack into that hex, 
it gives some of our stronger units the opportunity to really rest and repair. We'll also move up this artillery unit here. Okay. Good stuff. Got a rifle division here on refit. And I think I have bandwidth to let them stay on refit there. I don't think I need them on the front line right now. Now on the south, they're much more well positioned and dug in. Um, so we didn't quite advance quickly enough. Uh, they have fortification levels that are building up. They have whole infantry divisions. None of these are um, puppet state, if you will, infantry divisions. Um, again, no, no disrespect intended to any of the other nations that, that fought or their quality. It's just they weren't quite as well equipped or led as the um, earmarked was. So I think it's going to be much harder to break through here. So I think we have to focus our efforts on these guys coming in behind and then proposing that question to the Axis player of, do you really want to have your defensive line here encircled? So they're, if they're okay with it, I'm, I'm happy to encircle these guys. But I'm betting that we can get them to retreat because they have to consider where their next line of defense is going to be. So not going to do any attacks here. I might take some of these units and see how can I get them either far enough north that they can then contribute to that encirclement or far enough south that they can contribute. So I'm going to take some of these units here and move them all the way down. You're both on reserve. A rifle division with 5,000, 6,000. We're going to go back to refit actually. That's probably what you would have been on. However, we were probably fearing counterattack for the last couple of turns here. Okay, you can come down here. Okay. So now this stack, we're going to attack. Shattered them. I want to say it was expected, but I'm not surprised. 16 to 4, we're going to go here. All right, and retreat it. So now the width of their defense is significantly reduced, um, which should add to their paranoia a little bit about being encircled. And then some of these units were going to continue advancing. we build out this line that tries to connect us to the Crimea. Down here we have multiple units. This rifle division I'm going to have come south here. Perfect. Perfect. Back here. Yeah, you know, let's move you up. Here, actually going to take you off refit. And then we'll have the 10th Rifle Brigade also move up. Let's take the second guards. And let's, oh, they already have a support unit. 25th already has one. Rifle Brigade can't have one. Anti-tank, anti-tank. I don't know that I need anti-tank, so we're going to look at what else we have. I think instead what I'm going to do is the 20th Tank Brigade. And then the 25th here, I'm going to do the same thing. Let's do the 207th Tank Brigade. So that raises them to defensive value of 5. Yes, they have 2 to 1 odds if they attack, but that means the next turn I have the strength to break through. Um, it also means by adding those support units that in another turn we're going to be able to probably break through this hex, which means that south of Stellino they only have these two hexes left as a bastion. 
continuing our way down on to the Crimea. This is where it's been a lot of fun. So we brought in some reinforcements. Unfortunately, our rush to Odessa is not going to work because they have an infantry division there, and it is more than enough to hold out against the armor that we had brought forward. Um, but we can still use our armor to start encircling the city and cutting them off. So that, that's what we're going to do. We're going to use our armor to cut off the city. Now the city will still have... Um, supply via the port, right? So we're not completing, completely cutting off the city, but we're certainly adding to it. And then over here, we're going to start bringing in units to push south towards Odessa, right? So like this rifle corps, I'm going to move up. I'm also going to take this rifle division up here. And so we now have enough, really, to, to not have to worry about their counterattack. And we're going to just keep building. Um, I'm going to take that motorized unit down here. And then this airborne division can come up to hold kind of this key crossroads that we have. And then this rifle brigade, we're going to move up here. That's good. This motorized unit can come here. We just want to make sure we add some depth and add some layers to our defensive line. I don't know if I have any more of those motorized units. So I think I'm going to take start taking like some rifle divisions here. Can this guy go... Yeah, I don't know how much further I want to push west. Because that's really going to stretch the supply line. I need to take off this depot overlay. So really, I think we've built a pretty good... Oh, here's a motorized unit. I feel like we've built a pretty good um, defensive line here that they are not going to be able to break through. Now I'm just going to be doing some maneuvers here to try to connect our two forces. Right, there we go. So we've connected that. That airborne unit I'm going to move up. go there. I think I can be on the offensive with some of these units now. It's like I think I want to start hitting like these panzer units here. So we're going to attack. Good. They lost a third of their armor. Have these guys attack as well. They lost four armor. Yeah. We're gonna keep attacking some of these guys. They lost more than half. Okay, so here they actually have something pretty significant that we're gonna have to work through. But I think if we take all of these guys, we can probably break through that. We can. We're going to do it. Ooh, they had infantry divisions committed, though. So they held. And we lost 5,000 men. So that, that hurts a little. Um, and now we do have to be a little cautious, as I have really stretched the lines to do that. So I think we'll take one of these airborne divisions and move them here. Just to add to the defensive... Well, we might as well bring them up, I guess. 11, 13. Okay. Here we're going to hold, because they have some strong units. I think I just need to be particular about where I'm attacking. I think that's what this comes down to. 
Let's move you up and let's have you attack again. Good. So they continue their retreat there. This gives us some breathing space to connect our front line. And really, I'm what I kind of have my eye towards is I really want to take this rail line that moves through here. So then I'm not... Although we have this port for supply and we have this port for supply, I would rather set up a depot, say, here on this rail network that's connected to our national source of supply further north. That's kind of the reasoning there. I think I'm going to take more of these units as well over here kind of build up a defense because I need to maintain this crossing. It is absolutely critical. Take this guy and also have him come up. And now these motorized units that have just come in as reinforcements will start bringing over. I wonder if he can, I don't think he can cross there. I'm just going to bring them there and do the mechanized units and such first. These reinforcements are going to be so valuable. Mechanized core. Let's get you to Odessa immediately. Immediately bring some of these guys up here to help make sure we establish a connection to the Crimea from our Stalino front, right? That's that's what we're trying to do here. I would put you on a train to start doing rail repair. I would forgotten that, so good that I saw that now. I think I can probably leave Sevastopol alone. I don't think it's under any threat right now. So let's... um. Let's take you north here. Kind of fill in the line. Yeah, so we, we've now cut off Odessa from the rail network. Um, we started building our kind of encirclement perimeter. And we'll start bringing in... Like we had that mechanized core that we moved up here. This airborne division will probably move down as well. Um, and then we'll just encircle the city and, and start beating down on it. Uh, it won't be able to last for, for too terribly long. And then once we have it, my goodness, right? Like they, they have such a nightmare ahead of them of trying to stop us from going down south here right to Bucharest and such. Um, and then that's where we're going to have to have a lot of strategic thought around you know what, to what extent do we want to try to get quick, easy captures of these victory points versus spending those resources to push um, to push towards the heart of Germany, right? Is it more beneficial to quickly get down here and say capture from Budapest down to Bucharest, right? Just everything in and around here before they can establish a defensive perimeter. Or is it more valuable to use those resources pushing from, say, this Minsk pocket, right, which also looks very vulnerable, towards Berlin? So it's, it's something that we're going to have to consider quite a bit. But on to rail repair. Um, so let me toss on a rail network here. And then we're going to use Control-9 to highlight our rail repair units. And here we have one. So we need to repair all of this. So we're going to do that. How do I go north or keep going this way? Go north, and go down, over. Okay. So now all of these will be repaired in the next turn. This guy. Can I 
keep them on the train all the way over to here. Have him disembark there. Does it make more sense to disembark them here? It does. I'm going to take you off the train there. I don't know if that actually saved me that much. And then, um, yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I did that right. Um, <laughs> and then you can cross over next turn. Okay. And then we'll have that one build out the rail yards down, or the railroads, excuse me, down to Sevastopol. Is what we'll have them do. Yeah, a lot going on there. Uh, let's actually keep looking, though, at our rail repair units to make sure I'm not forgetting any of them. Thought maybe I had one up here. Maybe that's the one I moved down to Crimea. It might be. Here we go. You already done your movement? You have. And we'll turn the highlight back on. I bet you've already done it too. You have. Look at me being so proactive. We don't have any further north near Leningrad. Okay, very good. Now, um, our administrative points are a little lower because we have... Um, well, we, we did some leader changes. We built a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so we, we, we kind of went on a spending spree a couple of turns ago. So we only have 27. What I'd like to do is check out the build queue. Okay. So, we now have 1943 Rifle Corps available. Previously, we were still on the 42C, I think it was. 42B, I can't remember. Um, so this is really important because now it actually allows us to build rifle units, uh, infantry units. Uh, whereas previously we had more units than our limit allowed, so we couldn't build anything new. Now you see rifle divisions were above our limit, so we can't build any rifle divisions, but we can build rifle cores now. It does cost five administrative points, though, to do each one. I think I'm going to build two rifle cores and let them kind of build up strength in the reserve, uh, because as the front line condenses, I'm going to need stronger and stronger rifle cores that can then be deployed. So we're going to go ahead and build that rifle core, and we'll build one more. And that took away a lot more than five each time I did that, so I'm curious what I, what I missed there. What did I miss? Must be something. Okay. Now we only have five left. Uh, so we're going to do AI Depot Management. That should bring us to zero. Yep. Okay. So we had that one pretty tight. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to call it a turn there then. Uh, so we're going to hit in turn. And let's see what the Axis player has in terms of counterattack. And really, um, at the beginning of next episode, I'll be really curious to see where they've repositioned themselves. Uh, for example, what the heck are they going to do over here north of Minsk? Because uh, this this is probably the most alarming situation that they're faced with right now. Uh, it's it's a pretty dire circumstance situation they find themselves in. Going through their logistics phase right now before we get to their air phase. June 10th, turn 30. My goodness, guys, I can't believe we've had 30 turns. Um, 55 episodes. And uh, we're... We're still a long ways from Berlin, uh, the title destination of the scenario. So it's been fun. It's um, it's honestly been very. It has not been as challenging. There is no doubt in my mind as the 1941 Let's Play that I'm currently going through with you guys. Um, but this, in its own way, has been a very challenging um, scenario. Probably first off, because as I mentioned in episode one, I was, I was just kind of playing this to, to also learn it with you guys, right? And in those beginning episodes, it was focusing a lot on explaining mechanics, learning the mechanics together, 
hearing a lot from the comments and, and from your feedback in the community of uh, suggestions, tips, ways to be a little better with uh, some of the decisions we're making, etc. Um, and I'd say at the very beginning, it certainly felt much more challenging. So I'm, I'm optimistic that the 1941 scenario will, by turn 50, or by episode 55, also feel a little easier. Um, but the other challenging part has just been I've been really trying to see, hey, the Soviets won, uh, and they, they, they captured Berlin at X date, right? How much earlier in time can we do the same thing? How can we be more successful than historically events unfolded? It's a good kind of test for yourself. It's, again, there's, there's next to no way that the Axis player could win this game at this point. Let me rephrase that. There's almost no way that they co could um, take Moscow, take Leningrad, take Stalingrad, right? Win in the conventional outcome of World War II sense. The AI still very much could win in the sense of them stopping us from getting the necessary victory points by the end, the end date. Um, that is still very much possible. But let's not kid ourselves, guys. As we get a more narrow front, things will become much more difficult. Okay, so they're counterattacking here with the Totenkopf SS Panzer Grenadier Division. We actually managed to hold the line, though, and we destroyed 40 of their armored fighting vehicles. They attacked a second time, and we destroyed another 20 of their armored fighting vehicles. And the third time they attacked, we ended up retreating. But all said and told, they lost 100 armored fighting vehicles to try to take that one hex. I am so happy with that outcome. That is a fantastic outcome for us. Um, they've now taken three hexes here in total with this concentration of the 9th Panzer, the Totenkopf SS, Grenadier Division, etc. Um, but they lost over 100 armored fighting eagles. Just here, they just lost another 30. This is unbelievable, the losses they're enduring to take ground that is so meaningless. I, it's, it's incredibly good news for us. It's going to pose some challenges as we look at it and say, okay, how do we reform the line and hold it right? Um, but for now, it's, it's nothing but good news for us. They're also counterattacking here by Peskov, um, which I think is a little interesting and is going to be something that we'll need to address because we've now got these units that, um, if they end the turn, we're going to end up being isolated. Uh, so we're, we're really going to have to think about what we do to try to save them. They're trying to counterattack directly north of Stellino, and they're not successful in doing it right now. Okay, their, their follow-up... Oh, no, that wasn't north of Stellino. Okay, so that was the three divisions that we put there and said, you know, we're just going to use them and see if we can't wear them down. And it, it did. That's exactly what ended up happening. Unfortunately, we've now... We now have our mechanized core here a little isolated, uh, which is not what we want. But I feel pretty confident in our ability to reconnect the lines of supply. They counterattacked our push... No, oh... Okay, so we had just connected the Crimea and the South Stellino front, but they have now counterattacked with some stronger forces and... Oh boy, this is starting to get a little challenging. I've now got three or four areas where I really need to consider what we're going to do. My goodness, they held here, that's good. This is, this is becoming difficult. Oh, okay. So the 10th Motorized has completely gotten behind our lines. Uh, look at this. That's, that is a threat to our logistics right now, the fact that they have gotten in and behind us. My goodness. This is getting quite interesting. And now they're going to be able to escape because they, they broke through here. My goodness. My goodness. Maripol, we, we need to get forces there immediately to secure that depot. I'm really curious if they're going to end up actually having the movement points to take that depot, because that would be pretty significant. 
guys, I'm telling you, there, there's some type of like magic happening behind the scenes because once again, it has happened where I went on and on about how I thought XYZ was the outcome, how comfortable things felt right now for me as the Soviet player. And what happens? Complete chaos <laughs> as the Axis player executes their turn. Um, it, it's like I'm just tempting fate every time I say these things. Um, so we we have a lot to consider in the next episode. Um, specifically, two episodes from now as we look at the southern front of Stellino. They're doing a lot of air resupply to try to keep this guy as long as they can supplied. But it's just not going to matter long term. But I, I want to quickly free up these units, though, to continue this push towards Minsk. And it looks like they have brought in a lot of forces here um, to, to try to stop my very aggressive push. So this is getting interesting. So that was their turn. And uh, I, I don't know what I was expecting from them, but it was not that. And I would just once again say how impressed I am sometimes by this game and its AI um, to, to continue to surprise me in what its, what, what its decision tree and, and the outcomes kind of are. It's not surprising in the unrealistic sense. It's just it's, it's very thoughtful and maneuvering. Um, that's kind of how I would describe it. Getting near the end of our logistics phase, and then we'll wrap up with the end of turn summary and news events. First, we have to go up to 78% and then back down to 75%, though. There it is. Okay. Quick save here. And end of turn summary. Let me jump up to our usual spot of Leningrad. We had 80,000 men lost. It's not too high. 1,600 gun platforms, 500 armor, 300 airframes. Total net order of battle changes are negative 55,000 men, 1,400 guns, 300 armor, positive 200 airframes. That's a little surprising um, that we weren't able to, to have better numbers there in the order of battle changes. And for the Axis, they were also negative, am I reading that right, 16,000 men, 220 gun platforms, and 114 armor. Um, we have 53 units in low supply, 464 units on map. That is just an incredible number of units. We have 40 on ready and 147 on under strength. So that under strength number is a little higher than I'd probably like it to be. So my goodness, a lot going on. For news events, uh, the Axis continues to not put enough resources towards Italy. So they've already lost the North African theater box, um, and that then queued off the Italy scenarios, and they have they have continued to kind of disregard it. So the Italian campaign advances, uh, and the events move forward, and Soviet partisans continue. So that's really kind of telling of I think because of how quickly we stretched the map against the Axis player, it has forced them to ignore some of the theater boxes more than they may have otherwise been able to do. So I think that's good news for us. All right, Strategy Gamers, thank you so much for your continued support. Thank you for supporting such a wonderful game. Uh, if you got questions, comments, or feedback, please toss them in the comments section below. And as always, Strategy Gamers, hoping you have yourselves an excellent day. Bye now.